Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 21, or it's video 3 in the subsection on electric potential. Specifically, I'm going to do example 1 of 3, calculating the electric potential. There are a number of videos previous to this which are relevant. In video 18, we discussed the curl of the electric field. And we found that for electrostatics, the curl is equal to 0. In video 2, I discussed the electric field, and in video 1, I discussed Coulomb's law. I introduced the electric potential in video 19 and in this particular video I showed it to be basically a mathematical conven convenience for us to calculate the electric field and it didn't really suggest that it has a physical meaning. However in video 20 I discussed its uh, physical meaning as the electric potential energy per unit charge. Now in this particular video we're going to calculate the electric potential inside and outside a spherical shell of uniform charge density rho. So the radius, internal radius of the shell, well, actually, we'll say this, I know I've drawn the, uh, the thickness of the shell to be finite, but it will say that it is very small, it's negligible. So the radius of the shell is capital R. And we're trying to calculate the electric potential at a radius small r. So we're trying to have small r greater than large r and small, order, small r less than large r. So in order to do this, we must look at Gauss's law. So the first thing we note is that Gauss's law in differential form is the divergence of E is equal to rho over epsilon zero. Converting this into integral form, we get that if we integrate one over four pi epsilon zero, the separation unit vector divided by the magnitude of the separation unit vector to be squared integrated dq. That's the electric field. Now, if we're talking about a point charge, it's equal to one over four pi epsilon zero q over r squared r hat. But we know at this stage that the electric field due to a sphere is the same as that due to a point charge, or it appears to be the same, uh, as though all the charge is centered at the origin. So if we're talking about uh, a charge greater than a point charge, we can plug in a capital Q. Now what I'm going to do is calculate the electric potential at a radius small r greater than large r. So basically we're going to be outside the, uh, the, the spherical shell. So we know that in the integral form, the electric potential is minus the integral of e dot dl. I'd like to just define a limit. The limit of the electric potential as the radius goes to infinity is zero. In other words, the minimum of electric potential is at infinity and it grows as you move towards the origin. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug the value for the electric field we have up here in. So v, a function of r, is minus the integral going from infinity to r of e dot dl. The integral is pretty straightforward to calculate. What we get is one over four pi epsilon zero q over r. Now let's say we're just doing this for a point charge at the moment. Now this shouldn't surprise you because two videos previous to this we saw that the, uh, we saw that the electric potential for a point charge was, was this, so this shouldn't surprise us. But this is also of course going to be the electric potential for our sphere because we just need to change the value for, uh, for Q and we get the electric potential and the electric field for our sphere. So, so far what we've calculated is the value of the electric potential outside the spherical shell. Now we need to calculate it inside the shell at a radius small r less than capital R. So in order to do this, we need to do two integrals and sum them, or add them, excuse me. So we need to first of all calculate the electric potential outside the shell and we need to calculate the electric potential inside the shell. So it's outside or on the shell and then inside the shell. Now on the right hand side of this particular equation we know that it's going to be equal to zero because we know that inside the shell there is no electric field and of course the integral is going to go to zero. So this term here is going to go to zero. But note that the term on the left is not going to go to zero. So we're going to have a non-zero electric potential inside the sphere. Now this should interest you because we sh you should be aware that we have a zero electric field inside the shell, uh, but we don't, have, we don't have a zero electric potential inside the shell. The inter integral again, once again, is, pr is, is pretty straightforward. And we get one over four pi epsilon zero Q over capital R. Notice, by the way, it's that for inside or, um, excuse me, for outside or on the shell depends on small r, and for inside the shell depends on capital R. So finally then, just, just to, I suppose, to conclude, we say that the electric potential when we are outside the shell or on the shell 
is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, the charge on the shell divided by whatever radius it is that your, uh, your, your detector is at. However, if you want to calculate the electric, the electric potential inside the shell, it's 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0, Q over capital R, the radius of your shell. Notice that it is a constant and it is non-zero. So inside the shell, we know that the electric field is zero, but that the electric potential is non-zero. All right, so that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends. Subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me, give me, excuse me, a comment in the comment box below.